Hey YouTubers, happy homebrew Wednesday. It's still early today, so I'm just drinking coffee. Um, so basically the majority of this is going to be talking about my brew day and my chocolate oatmeal stout and showing you some footage. And also I told you guys I'd give you a hop update from my hop update from the other day. So I had uh, 3.7 ounces of cascade that I harvested wet and then I went ahead and dried it overnight and I ended up getting about 1.8 uh, dried so you know just a little less than half is what it took out so I'm pretty happy with that so I basically have uh, 0.8 ounces of uh, centennial and 1.8 ounces of cascade that I harvested and dried and they're sitting in my freezer right now so I'm quite happy with that for my first year. We'll see if the vines produce anything else, but I wasn't expecting anything from my first year, so I'm very happy with that. Okay, other than that, I'm going to cut over real quickly to some uh, brewing footage, and then I will be back with you guys to uh, discuss things that went well and things that went bad. So cheers. <laughs> Noted why uh, the Ravens have to be on the road for uh, the season, the league season. One of the aspects is they they should. Okay, so you guys saw all that footage. Um, first off, I want to say thank you to uh, for, for Matt, uh, MD Gopinski, and Larry Larmel22 for, uh, you know, I, I was on Uvu that day, and they both joined for a little while. Matt for a little while, and then he had to go off to work, and Larry uh, chatted with me for quite some time. So here's basically what happened. 
Um, yeah, I was talking to Larry, and Larry basically said, if I were you for that big a beer, I would draw off a little more wort. So what I did was, off my first runnings, I got almost four gallons, which is a little bit more than I usually get. So I ended up uh, getting almost four gallons there, and then overall, you know, around seven-ish or so. Uh, let's see if I have the numbers here or not. Okay, so I ended up doing 7.25 gallons is what I ended up boiling, and I ended up doing a 75-minute boil just to bring that down a little bit. And my pre-boil gravity uh, was 1050 versus what they said was 1066, which to me actually seemed a hair high. But So I added another 15 minutes to the uh, boil. I probably could have added more. Larry recommended doing 90. I ended up doing 75. Maybe 90 would have brought up my post a little bit. So I ended up with 6.1 gallons post-boil. Now, that skewed a little bit because my uh, uh, wort chiller's in there. So I actually think when I took that out, it was probably more around 5.9. Um, so I probably could have boiled it for that extra 15 minutes and still got it, you know, around 4.7, 4.8. And maybe that would have bumped my gravity up just a hair more. So I ended up, I'll say, 5.9 gallons pre post-boil. And then I ended up at uh, about 1071. They called for 1074, so that wasn't too far off. Maybe if I did that extra 15 minutes, maybe it would have been 1074. So, also mashing wise, uh, I didn't take very many pictures of the uh, mash ton and stuff just because I was chatting with Larry and Matt, and it was kind of hard to take video of that at the same time. So, I wanted to mash at 154. Uh, I had issues with that, uh, and maybe it has something to do with Brew Target. I'm thinking about going to Beersmith because Brew Target said 5.156 gallons at 166. Okay, I did about 5.2. I went ahead and dumped in part of it, and then left it on heat to warm up my mash tun, and then. I went ahead and dumped the rest in, and it was probably at about 170, maybe 168 or so, or so, so even higher than they recommended. By the time I dumped all the grain in and stirred it in, it was already down to about 148, 147. So I went ahead and boiled about one gallon of water and dumped that in. And I could only get it up to about 151, so I went ahead and started the mash at that. So I went ahead and did a 90-minute mash, and... Uh, by the time it, it went, the majority of it was between 151 and 150, and then at the end of 90, it was at 148. So I didn't lose very much temperature. It's just I mashed a little bit lower and I had planned. Um, what else? Uh, kind of a lesson learned on the cocoa powder, too. I have a couple issues. Uh, cocoa powder, next time, I will be taking it out of the container first. It's so packed in, so compacted in there that... I probably should have taken it out of the container and dumped it in the bowl first to make it easier to dump in. So that's a lesson learned for me on that. Um, I'm just looking at my sheet. So then the other issue I had was, I don't know, I, I tested, I love my new brew kettle. I, I just absolutely rocked. I had zero worries about boil over. I had uh, seven and a quarter gal gallons in, which in my seven and a half gallon brew kettle, that thing would have overflowed at uh, hot break, you know, before that. Even being careful. I've, I've done about seven, 7.1 in that, and it was still borderline. So seven and a quarter, I don't think would have cut it in that brew kettle. In this brew kettle, I didn't even bother like worrying about the heat at all. I just let it go into hot break. You know, even though it, it uh, you know, puffed up a little bit, it wasn't that big of an issue. Uh, dumping my 60-minute hops in, just dumped them in. Zero worries about it overflowing. So, love that. Love the sight glass. Love the temperature gauge. Everything. I just love the brew kettle. Now, here's the only issue I had. I know my dip tube and everything was tight. All that stuff was tight. I initially had used a silicone hose when I first got this, and I had airtight issues on the valve, on the nipple in the front. 
So I switched to a vinyl hose, which fit much tighter. I filled that thing up with 12 gallons of water, and I drained it and only ended up with about a quarter cup. Now, when I did my boil, I, uh, you know, when I did it this time, something happened. I think some condensation got in the end of the hose a little bit, you know, just from the heat differences. Uh, maybe I should have put the hose on there even earlier when it was still hot, you know, when it was a lot hotter. So I put it on and I could see there was a little condensation, but it still felt pretty snug. But sure enough, when I got down to maybe a gallon and a half or so left, when it got below the um, horizontal part of the dip tube, the suction started to stop. I tilted it back and it kind of started up again so I thought okay it, you know it started sucking it all down again so I'm like alright great I'll set it back down and it stopped again and then when I tilted it back up I couldn't get it to restart so I wish I would have left it tilted because it probably would have drained the majority of that so for some reason I lost some uh, suction when it was draining I'm not sure why so I probably lost at least a gallon and a half I would say so I ended up putting, after the yeast starter went in, I probably ended up a little under five gallons where I probably would have easily had six if the suction would have went better. So that's something I need to figure out and figure out why that happened. I'm, I'm still not sure. Also, uh, I, I just don't know about that yeast. I'm a little confused with the tube of yeast. I went ahead and let it sit out to room temperature for a while. And I don't know with the... With the white labs, with these, the second you take it out of the refrigerator, are you supposed to shake it up and l then let it come to room temperature? Or do you let it come to room temperature and then shake it up? I, I might not have done that right. So what I did is I let this sit out for probably three or four hours at least till we're warmed up. I did my yeast starter. I shook this up really well to everything where everything was mixed up to nothing was stuck in the bottom. And I put in my yeast starter. Went ahead and let this yeast starter go for probably almost 36 hours, and I didn't see a whole lot of krausen on the yeast starter at all, where with a lot of other yeast I do. And so maybe this has something to do with the English ale yeast, I'm not sure. That worried me a little bit, so instead of decanning, I just pitched the whole thing in, because I, I wanted to make sure I got everything from the vial plus any growth. Now, it didn't take off that day but it took off on Monday because my brew day was on Sunday. And here we are on Wednesday, and I can already see the fermentation slowing down in the airlock a little bit, which I know it's not that big a deal to look at airlocks. Um, they, they don't always tell the true story, so I'm going to let this go until Friday, and then I think I'm going to crack it open and take a hydrometer sample just to see where we're at. You know, just because... Uh, I'm shooting for, uh, this is saying 1025 for final gravity. Um, so let's say it's still sitting at 1040, then I might be a little worried. If it's all the way down to 1025, 1030, then I'll go let it go a little bit longer, and then we'll, we'll see where we're at. If it's still like really high up in 1040 or so, I'll let it go for a few more days. If it's still there, I'm thinking I may have to pitch another vial. Well, I'll see how that... I'll check it on my Beer Fun Friday and take another video of that. So, again, all right. So there were the good parts and bad parts of my brew day. Uh, Matt and Larry joining was great. I loved it. First time I'd done an Uvu chat while I was brewing, so that was pretty cool. Just kind of keeps you occupied a little bit. Uh, love my brew kettle. Just awesome. <laughs> I couldn't. I can't say enough good things about it. In fact, I really would like to get another one for a hot liquor tank because I think that would be awesome to have one for my hot liquor tank too. Uh, what else could happen? Um, trying to think on that one. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm excited about this beer. I'm hoping it's it's good. I, all the little issues I had hopefully doesn't affect the beer. And then I told you a lot of the things I didn't like about the brew day. So. I uh, don't know what else to say about that. And maybe on Beer Fun Friday I'll talk about this a little bit more about my work chiller and those type of things. I had a few other uh, concerns about things I didn't like. 
if my wart chiller still worked, but I don't want to I don't want to go on anymore on this video. I don't want to make it too long. This is more about just the footage, talking about it a little bit, and then calling it good. So, and also the reason I'm not drinking beer right now is I have a fancy football draft tonight where I'm sure I'll be drinking beer for that. And I don't think I'm going to have a chance shooting a video tonight, so I wanted to make sure I got this out today. So, happy homebrew Wednesday. I've watched some of your videos. Thank you again to all my subscribers. You guys have a good rest of the week, and I look forward to watching your videos. Cheers.